on the attack. Can you guess who the target is? There is nobody that respects women more than I do. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary. Nobody respects women more than Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton's husband abused women more than any man that we know of in the history of politics, right? Hillary is trigger happy. She is. She's trigger happy. She's totally controlled by Wall Street and all the people that gave her these billions of dollars. Hillary hurt many women, the women that he abused. She's got a bad temperament, by the way. And her husband learned that a few times, didn't he? Hillary was an enabler, and she treated these women horribly. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. She wants to abolish it. Some of those women were destroyed, not by him, but by the way that Hillary Clinton treated them after everything went down. So just remember that, folks. Well, you've heard her on the radio. She is a star. Yes, Laura Ingram, who's also editor-in-chief of Life Set, is here to go on the record. Nice to see you, Laura. Nice to see you. Two questions. Is uh, Bill Clinton fair game in this, number one? And number two, is it smart? I think it's fair game because much of what the um, left is attacking Trump on is his character. Um, he's unstable. He's crazy. All the things that you've heard. And, and a lot of that is coming from the right as well. You know, the never-Trumpers, the discontented, malcontents, bitter clingers to their... Uh, to, to, you know, to their upset about what happened in the primary. But if, if Hillary Clinton has a special bond with female voters, which she argues repeatedly, she's the woman's candidate, then I think it is without a doubt fair game that Donald Trump says, okay, if that's the case, why did you take part in, as Christopher Hitchens wrote, I believe, and according to him, uh, Sid Blumenthal kind of gave this information out about uh, your role in tamping down the bimbo eruptions. I mean, we were around when all that was happening, and uh, so, yes, of course it's uh, Here, The same part is whether it's strategically wise, because I went back and looked, and in the, in the height of the impeachment yeah. and then the Senate uh, trial, uh, Bill Clinton's approval rate was 68 percent, and his disapproval was 30 percent. So, when, what, you know, so he was immensely popular at his worst times. Yeah, she has, she has the last name, but I would argue she doesn't have the charm uh, the personality or the campaign chops that Bill Clinton has. He had something back then um, that I think was different. He had, a, he had an appeal that was an Arkansas appeal, Midwest appeal, that I think all these years later, I'm not sure it wears all that well. It does look like yesterday. And even though Trump and she are basically the same age, he seems somehow new and fresh because he's abandoning the old uh, pathways of both the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. And forging a new, uh, I would I would argue more Reagan-esque uh, path, which is a slightly more populist, still has conservative roots, yet not doctrinaire on uh, either side. How dirty is this going to get? And I guess we should also keep our eye on it. If, it, if the two candidates themselves don't get particularly dirty, their proxies will. Of course, I mean this is uh, Clinton started the war room politics that we know of in, mo in the modern era. George Stephanopoulos, James Carville, and the whole crew, Podesta. I mean they were all. This was the war room. I mean, they savaged their opposition. Let's not forget how Clinton got elected. There's a whole documentary done on the war room. So is Donald Trump going to have a team of people together that not only answer the attacks but launch the attacks? I would imagine if he doesn't do that, um, it's going to be hard for him. Although I do think the central tenet of his campaign is renewing America, the economy, our standing in the world, but renewing the home front. He must decorate that Christmas tree with specifics. So it shouldn't be just a tree. That's pretty. But you need to put the ornaments on it. Those are the specific policies that he can go to black neighborhoods, Latino neighborhoods, blue-collar workers, and say, follow these path, this path. It surely is going to be better than what these two parties have done to you over the past 15 years. Okay. Well, Bill Clinton has his, his, his history. Donald Trump has said his yep. words about women. Why is it going to stick on Secretary Clinton? I mean, uh, you say, yes, yeah, Secretary Clinton, the two guys seem to walk away on this. I think he's, I think what in this case, it just it goes to a matter of credibility. It's not to say that Hillary couldn't do some great things for, for women in the country. That's fine. But to but to try to hold yourself out as the only path forward for women when you can argue that woman after woman I don't, was, was abused, was had horrific things done to her at the hands of her husband, and she apparently didn't have a problem with it, or at least not enough of a problem to, to not be part of the bimbo tamping down at the time, which is, what, again, that was their yeah. language, not mine. I guess that, I mean, we'll Remember the hand squeezing of the hand that Juanita Broderick said she did when she went back a week later, said, she squeezed my hand, didn't let go of it, looked at me and said, we're okay now, right? So I'm paraphrasing, but something like that. That was, I mean, that was very specific recall from Juanita Broderick on Hillary's visit. Lauren, nice to see you. Great to see you.